Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to learn a fourth way to calculate the delta H of a reaction. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, uh, I would like to invite you to do that so you can uh, keep up to date on all the AP Chemistry lessons right here in this uh, on my channel here. So let's take a look at this fourth and final way that we're going to learn about to determine the delta H of a reaction, the change in enthalpy, of course. Now, this is a pretty neat little uh, trick that you can use. If you take two reactions, these are two completely different chemical reactions. We have A plus B yields C, and it has a specific enthalpy of, of a reaction. We'll call that X. And here's a separate reaction underneath it. Uh, D plus C yields B plus E. And its uh, change in, in enthalpy is a completely different value. Why? Well, you might notice that you can take these two reactions over here and you can actually add them together to get a third completely different reaction. The B's will cancel and the C's will cancel. And when you add the two reactions, you get A plus D yields E. So a completely different reaction than the first two reactions that you had. Well, guess what? If you can add the first two reactions and get a third reaction, well, to find the delta H of this third reaction, all you have to do is add up the individual delta H's for those reactions. And so the delta H for this new reaction is just X plus Y. So this is actually a pretty neat way to calculate the delta H of a reaction. We call this Hess's Law. And these problems are actually, uh, in fact, I kind of like these, to be honest, because it's almost like solving a puzzle. All you have to do is, is manipulate these equations so that they add up to get you the overall equation that you're trying to solve for. So here's an example of that. We're given two separate chemical equations, separate reactions here. Each of those has its own change in enthalpy, its own delta H, and we're asked to use those two delta H values for these reactions to determine the delta H of this other third reaction. So once again, all we have to do is somehow manipulate these two reactions up top here so that they add up to give us the overall balanced equation at the end. This is kind of like solving a puzzle. Um, one thing I notice is that in the overall equation, N2O4 needs to be on the left. It needs to have a coefficient of 1. Well, the only place that N2O4 pops up in these other equations is in number 1 up here, and it is on the left, and it has a coefficient of 1, so it looks like that equation is okay. I don't have to do anything to that. On the other hand, though, take a look at NO. NO is on the right side of the arrow, whereas NO up in this other that equation, number 2, it is on the wrong side. It's on the left side. So I'm going to need to flip equation number 2. Now remember what happens when I flip an equation. What happens to the delta H? Well, back in an earlier part of this unit, we said that that changes the sign. So when I flip this equation around, delta H becomes a positive 56.6, just like so. Now the NO, I just need to have it where it has a coefficient of 2. And it doesn't. This only has a coefficient of 1. So I'm going to have to double this equation here, equation number 2. When I double that, it's going to double the delta H. So when I multiply all those coefficients by 2, it looks like this. And my new delta H is a doubled, as you can see. It's a positive 113.2. Now, if I play my cards right, I think these first two equations will now add up to get me the new equation, equation number 3. And I see that because the two NO2s will cancel out on both sides. Everything else works out. And so to find the delta H, I just have to take 57.9 plus 113.2, and I get 171.1 kilojoules per mole. So that's a, another way to calculate delta H using Hess's law. Sometimes it's a little bit more 
uh, complex, a little bit trickier. Sometimes we have three equations. I suppose we could have lots of equations where we add up. In AP Chemistry, we try to keep it pretty simple. We try to keep it to maybe three equations most of the time. But given these first three reactions and their individual delta H's, we should be able to add them up and get this overall balanced equation down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and just jump into this. Let's start with the carbon. We notice that in the overall equation, or our final equation I should say, carbon is on the left side and it has a coefficient of 1. And the only place I see carbon up top here is up here in equation number 1. It is on the proper side of the arrow and it does have the right coefficient. So I'm, not, I'm actually just going to leave that equation alone. Let's take a look at water. Water needs to be on the left side. It needs to have a coefficient of 1. And if I look for water up top here, I see water in equation number 3, but it's on the wrong side of the arrow. So I'm going to have to flip equation number 3. So when I flip it, it changes the sign. So I flip it, it's going to be a positive 483.6. So that's, that's good. Well, now I also notice that water has the wrong coefficient. It needs to have a coefficient of 1, but it has a coefficient of 2 up, up top here. So I need to divide all these coefficients in half. So I'm going to have a 1, a 1, and I guess a 1 half in front of the oxygen. That's going to mean my delta H gets cut in half as well. So when I do that, it's going to be a positive 241.8 kilojoules per mole. So that's, that's good there for the water. Let's go on to the CO, the carbon monoxide. When I look for carbon monoxide up top, I see it in equation number 2. And we kind of have the same problem with this as we did with the, the water. It's on the wrong side of the arrow. So I need to flip equation number 2. And that's going to change the sign of delta H. That's going to make this a positive 566.0, just like that. And I once again see that the coefficient is twice what it should be. This 2 should be a 1, shouldn't it? So I'm going to divide all these coefficients in equation number 2 in half. So I have a 1, a 1, and a 1 half. And that's going to cut my delta H in half as well. So that positive 566 now becomes a positive 283. And if I've done everything, I believe that everything is going to add up now. In fact, it looks like I can cancel out a few things. I can cancel out the carbon dioxides on both sides. I see one oxygen here that I can cancel out with one oxygen over here. You know, the one half and one half, you know, that cancels out with the one O2, and everything else adds up. So now all I have to do is take a calculator and add these values together. Negative 393.5 plus 283.0 plus 241.8, and I get a total value that delta H equals positive 131.3 kilojoules per mole. So this is another tool in our toolbox in order to calculate delta H. So if you have followed all the way through Unit 6, we've actually learned four ways to calculate delta H using the experimental way, you know, Q equals MC delta T, and then take uh, kilojoules and divide by moles. We've learned about Hess's law here. We've learned about uh, bond enthalpies, you know, bonds broken minus bonds formed. And we've also learned about enthalpies of formation, uh, the, the products minus the reactants. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've learned something about Hess's law. If you have, please smash that thumbs up button. Thank you for following along here in Unit 6. In our next video, we're going to jump right into Unit 7, which is about chemical equilibrium. I'm Jeremy Krug. I hope to see you in Unit 7.